No! Alright guys, today we're going to be working on the seat belts. So strap in, let's go! Alright, so we just had to take the roof down because there is no way that uh, we could work on those seat belts without taking that roof off. Let me show you why. So, really, really, really difficult to see here. But um, let me get some extra light. On a cold, cold, dark day, we have lanterns for this very reason. Right, so let's put this light back in here. So, you can see here, the seatbelt goes up, along and into here, and then it goes into here. Now, unfortunately for us, that means that we really needed a lot of height here and the roof had to come off. So you can see there on the passenger side, if the camera will focus, that we've had to move that forward. I'll actually show you that side because it's probably a little bit easier to see. This one we had to cut because we couldn't even move this seat. It was so hard up against the body that we couldn't even get in there. So we've cut that one away, but you can see hopefully in here that we're gonna have to get off this panel this whole section here and the inside section of this door so we'll probably start on the driver's side by taking apart oh this car loves to lock itself and that door really loves to swing wide we are gonna get in here Today, I'm gonna to remove these sections of panel here, pull the driver's side forward, just like that. And, hey, there is a panel there, that's really cool. Did not see that there previously, let's take a look. Nope, no goodies, that's all right. So, we're gonna to have to take away an entire panel here, so you can see the rivets, just down in here. So stay with us and we will get those off and take a look. All right, so minor update. I've managed to get a bunch of the plastics off and we have exposed, you can see it here, my noisy zooming camera. We've exposed the actual unit here, but this plug here, which goes into the unit, was already unplugged. So at some point, it's either fallen out or the force of the uh, detonator going off has pushed it out, I don't know. But nothing is melted. So, plus, let's see if we get any better luck with everything else.
That's horrible. So we got this panel off. You can kind of see here the restraint point and the end there. I said before, you know, we've got the exposed unit there. However, this was a pain in the butt to get off. This whole section here was really, really, really stuffed up. Uh, I think that is because we needed to take off this whole section here. Now, for the other side, we're definitely gonna have to do that. Um, that is not the worst thing in the world because the SAS unit is stored, I think, behind this section here. So that's okay. We're gonna get back to it and I will see you soon. One dead socket so I'm gonna need a new 14 mil before I can go any further with any of this Right, so can you see this guy right here? We've removed every other bolt from the restraint system, including down the ground there. This one will not come out. Doesn't matter what I do, doesn't matter how I do it. Ratchets, wrenches, hammers, it ain't coming out. And unfortunately, in the last attempt, we managed to strip two corners. So this is gonna be a pain in the butt. I will come back when I got something. All right, so miniature car vlog interruption. We are getting lunch because we need a break. What am I saying, we? Sean couldn't show up today. So I didn't get a whole bunch of stuff done that I wanted to and some stuff got delayed. That's okay. Um, the seat belt on the driver's hand side is out. It is sorted. I have replaced the seat belt. And I have managed to really hurt myself. Because there was a 14 millimeter bolt that just didn't want to come. And I used a lot of force and I pushed and I pushed and I pushed and then I crushed my finger. It is not happy. Not even in the slightest. That's okay. I've got more fingers, but it seems like I'm doomed to hurt myself every time I work on this car in any way, shape or form. Back up to lunch.
you know how hard this is? People make this look so easy. It's not easy. And just like that, it's back in. All right, that's better. So you can see here, I've pulled apart the lining of the airbag and you can actually see the clip. Use your screwdriver in there and just flick it open. It takes two seconds and it's out. So save yourself the hassle. Don't spend half an hour to an hour trying to get this bastard out. Open it up this way instead. Check out what I found whilst trying to uh, pull apart the airbag. The last service for this car, including the model number, manufacture date, compliance date, etc. It's pretty good. And everything that they did to it. Pretty sweet. Nice find. Oh, all right, what happened today? Today was a failure and a success, I guess. So, failure number one. This took an hour and a half, maybe longer, to get off because there was always one clip that wouldn't go, which was this guy right here. This guy was melted to all buggery. Fortunately, however, and what normally happens, the clip that goes into the, uh, the airbag didn't melt. It blew out, and it's actually blown itself sideways at an angle, but it disconnected itself. So we don't have to worry about having to replace that to solder anything, to crimp anything. That replacement will go straight in. On that same token, uh, whilst we couldn't get the seatbelt out today, the module, we did learn that the module itself also didn't melt when it blew. Um, you might not know this, but there are pyrotechnics in basically all of these things. But you do know that. And usually what happens is when they explode, it generates a really large amount of heat. You can see that this one's warped quite a bit from that heat and melted. And it will usually melt all the plugs. That did not happen. Really. Uh, the only thing we really learned today was we have clips we don't have to replace them. And we can't actually get to the passenger side uh, seat belt, nor can we get to the passenger side plastics to get the back off because that fender is still blocking the door on the passenger side from opening and we need to pull that plastic up to make that happen. This is a problem. Why is this a problem? Well, everything seems to be dependent on visiting a workshop. Uh, we were going to hold off going to the workshop and straighten the rails ourselves. I think I may just have to go ahead and book it in. <sighs> it's really annoying, but it just means spending a bit more money. That isn't the end of the world, not with this project. 
We are so under budget right now, it doesn't matter. But I think just to, to keep the content rolling, to keep the project going, I'm gonna book it in. I'm biting that bullet. I hate to do it, but that's it. So tune in probably the next episode, we'll have a, a chat about a few things in relation to airbag systems and what replacing that is going to be like and what we have to do. After that, we will hopefully be back with a straightened fender and a straightened bonnet and a whole bunch of other things that have arrived in the meantime. You will find about very soon. Alright guys, thanks for tuning in. Sorry it's such a lackluster episode. Catch you next time. Right, so thanks for tuning in today. I'm Matt, this has been Vogue Engineering. If you really like what we're doing, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and if you're really keen to help support us through this bill, hit up our Patreon. The links are all in the description below. Have a good one. Peace out. Okay, so, and you know what, I'm sick of saying so.